Harriet Beecher Stowe, better known to her friends as Hattie, could ride up a storm because she could also read like a whirlwind. The more she read, the stronger the wind would blow. First it was like a storm, then she read faster and it became a tornado. She read even faster and became a full-fledged hurricane. Reading was always a big part of her life, even when she was very busy with half a dozen children to raise. Her husband, having to travel long distances for work, could not help Hattie at home. Hattie, not one to sit around, helped her brother Charles, who was a very sickly person, through his illness and back on his feet. Hattie had a lot of great ideas, but times were tough and she was very busy with her work. She had written over 30 books and articles for young people. Civil unrest was in the streets of Cincinnati. Even though war had not been declared yet, you could hear the cannons being fired overhead. Good citizens in Cincinnati, like many other places in the U.S., were trying to help escape slaves find their way to freedom. At this time, an epidemic broke out. Cholera killed thousands of people. Many of them were children. Hattie tried to keep all her children well, but the baby got sick and died, and she took the whole family to Maine. Hattie started writing again. She kept her ideas and information, feelings and notions under her hat and until they grew too large to fit there. She came up with a story to write that helped change the whole history of America. Her book changed people's views and got them to thinking. Her, ga her hat grew so large with all the great ideas for her story that it flew up about a hundred miles into the sky off of her head and exploded to rain back down as little tiny hats that spelled out the name of that book. Uncle Tom's Cabin. Hattie's mind and hand worked as one to put it all down on paper. It was a long, hard struggle to write that book. It started to grow arms and legs and tried to run away and hide. It did not want to be revised. Harriet Beecher Stowe once met Abe Lincoln before he became president. It was a long trip for Abe Lincoln. Relatives needed some help, and he agreed to travel to Ohio. There he met Harriet Beecher Stowe. She was chasing after that large book she had been writing all the way from Maine. The book was running away just like a spoiled child. Come back here, you, you piece of runaway literature, Hattie said, and Abe almost laughed to himself at her frustration and the sheer whimsy of it all. But he was also too shocked to say anything. My good sir, don't just stand there gaping. Help me catch this creature, Hattie said. Madam, what is it that we are chasing and why is it running? Asked Abe Lincoln. It's my book I wrote. I'm trying to wrestle with it to get it rearranged for the publisher to print. I just know it's the most important book I have ever written. My imagination's so vivid I made the book come to life. This is definitely a book I will have to read, said Abe. I'm Abe Lincoln, madam. And your name might be Mrs. Stowe, Harriet Beecher Stowe. My friends call me Hattie, replied Hattie. I'll help you, Hattie. I have a plan. He ran ahead of the runaway book and chopped down an old rotten tree to block its path. Honest Abe was quite handy with an axe, you see. He chopped wood on a regular basis at home for firewood, so he was able to chop down that tree with one mighty blow. The book tried to run away, but Hattie tripped it up with her umbrella. It landed with its pages open, so Abe started to read it. 
don't you worry now, I'm not letting this book go until it's safely delivered to your publisher. May I read your book, Hattie? Asked Abe. As long as you don't mind these little final revision marks, Hattie replied. After she made a few changes to the story, Hattie handed the book to Abe Lincoln and said, Certainly that's all right, Mr. Lincoln. Thank you so much for helping me catch this book. Abe squashed the arms and the legs of that book back in place and handed it back to Hattie. Mighty fine reading, Mrs. Stowe, and a mighty fine message to go with it, said Abe. Abe never forgot Hattie and her book or its important message against slavery. No matter where you see injustice, you should always stand for what is right. The book started acting up again, and Hattie had to tie a rope around it before she could take it to the publisher. Uncle Tom's Cabin was finally published and sold all over America. Everyone wanted to read it. Her characters came to life in the readers' hearts and minds to lead them into the truth that slavery was wrong. No one should ever own another person, or should anyone be viewed as less because they're different? Hattie's words were powerful and caused great action, stirring their souls to search inside themselves to ask, is slavery right? Hattie was not the strongest, fastest, or the most skilled woman with a weapon for combat, but as we have all heard, the pen is mightier than the sword. Her heart and soul gave her a great strength to write powerful words that stirred a nation into action and helped free the slaves.